Hi, welcome to World Lit with Shubs. I haven't been making any videos recently because I didn't read any book that kind of grabbed me by the throat and forced me to make a video. Uh, since I found one and I read one, I am here to make a video on that book. The book that we are going to discuss today is a true novel by Minne Mizumura. It is a Japanese novel uh, translated by two translators, Anne Sharif and uh, Juliet Winters Carpenter. The story is a loose retelling of Wuthering Heights and however it is a story within a story within a story. It revolves around one mysterious person with a tragic past called uh, Taro Azuma. The book begins with uh, the introduction of the author as a fictional character. She and her family relocate to New York in the 1960s. Around the same time, they get the acquaintance of, they get introduced to Taro Azuma, who is a young man of 19 years who has immigrated to the US as a chauffeur. Mizumura's father takes a liking to Taro and uh, he lends him English audio tapes and English flashcards that he has bought for his family uh, so that uh, Taro can improve his English. Um, Taro is like a sponge. He absorbs everything pretty quickly and he is super intelligent and he quickly changes jobs, quickly um, rises above uh, his poverty and his uh, desolate situation in the US. Initially, the author is intrigued by him because uh, she is more curious about how a Japanese immigrant could move to US without education, without knowledge of English or how um, he could come here to become a chauffeur. Um, and also the fact that um, Taro is more closer to her age than the other acquaintances or the other Japanese she comes across as part of her father's colleagues or her father's subordinates or her mother's friends. Taro is more closer to her age and uh, they would have something to talk about in common. However, Taro never lets his guard down and he is a very secretive, uh, reticent person. Um, but with Mizumura, he kind of lets his guard down a couple of times and so there is a kind of a delicate bond uh, which is formed between uh, Taro and Mizumura. Mizumura was viscerally misses her homeland and desperately wants to go back to Japan. So she promises herself that she will move back to Japan when, her, when she completes her uh, studies. Um, by then, uh, Mizumura's father has uh, lost his job, uh, has fallen sick, and his and his wife has left him. And uh, Mizumura moves back to Japan with her uh, and puts her dad in a um, senior home. And uh, her mom also moves back to Japan with her younger boyfriend, and she uh, lives in Japan. The only person who lives in the US is her sister. However, Mizumura visits US several times um, because she teaches and gives lectures on Japanese literature. Uh, so she visits several uh, universities in uh, the US. As years progress, uh, Mizumura and her sister keep hearing lots of stories about how uh, Taro Azuma has become extremely rich is become a venture capitalist and uh, how he has become one of the prominent Japanese in the US and then one day he just vanishes from their lives. During one uh, of the visits to the US where, where uh, Mizumura is giving a lecture at the Stanford University, a stranger called Fuzuke approaches Mizumura and asks her if she has time to talk with him. Uh, so after the lecture is over, Mizumura goes to a, goes to dinner. She's still puzzled over why he wants to talk with her. And uh, during the course of the dinner, uh, Fuzuke mentions that he has met Ta Taro Azuma in Japan, 
and uh, Taro Azuma mentioned Mizumura's name and said that she is one of the persons he used to know and he wanted to know if Fuzuke knew of her. Fuzuke who works at a Japanese publication as an editor has heard of her but to continue the conversation with Taro Azuma he does mention that he knows her. However, he doesn't know her personally and so he's so intrigued about her that he wants to meet her and talk with her in the US when he is also visiting US. Mizumura is uh, puzzled and it's, she's she, her curiosity is piqued and she wants to know what happened to Taro Azuma and so she takes him back to her house where she is re renting and uh, it's, it's raining and they have they have Japanese tea and talk through the night about uh, Fuzuke's interaction and the, the strange situation in which uh, Fuzuke met uh, Taro Azuma in Japan and the ensuing conversation and the uh, events that unfolded in uh, Fuzuke's visit during Fuzuke's visit to that part of Japan. Mizumura who has been wanting to write a, an I novel decides to write a true novel um, with uh, with a narration that Fuzuke has given her about the life of Taro Azuma. Uh, in Japanese literary tradition, both I novel and a true novel are both celebrated genres. The I novel, I'm just going to read what um, Wikipedia says. The I novel is a literary genre in Japanese literature that is used to describe a type of confessional literature where the events in the story correspond to events in the author's life. On the other hand, a true novel is a novel that is pure fiction. The story till here is prologue. This prologue itself took like 265 pages or something. Then the book is divided into volume 1 and volume 2 and this is uh, essentially what Fuzuke narrates to Mizumura during the course of the night. Volume 1 narrates how Fuzuke met um, Fuzuke chances upon Taro Azuma's cottage, how Fukima invites him inside uh, and uh, has a conversation with him and uh, how Fukima starts narrating the story of Taro, uh, how she met Taro who was no more than a little boy. Volume 2 describes about um, Toro and Yoko's friendship, their troubled relationship, Taro's um, departure to the US, uh, Foko's marriage with Masayuki, and then uh, Taro's return to Japan, uh, and eventually Yoko's death and Masayuki's death, and uh, Taro's vanishing. Despite the loose retelling of Wuthering Heights, a true novel is a completely Japanese story uh, that hurtles forward hand in hand with uh, Jap Japan's westernization and the rise of middle class. Volume 1 begins with the birth of Fukima Tsuchiya in 1937 and uh, the book ends with the epilogue at the turn of the 21st century when Mizumura goes back to Japan to the uh, location where Fuzuke says that he saw Taro during his last meeting. Spanning a period of 65 years, this book is a saga. As much as the story is about Taro, Fukima's story is the most powerful in the book, I would say. She has risen from poverty uh, by working in several wealthy households as a maid, but at the end, she kind of fulfills her life's destiny or her life's purpose uh, by becoming a respectable person in the society like having a career for herself and stuff like that. Taro is neither vindictive nor villainous like uh, Heathcliff. Um, his reticence and his antisocial behavior are backed by a solid evidence of childhood neglect and abuse that uh, he underwent in the hands of his family. Foko is portrayed as a bratty, sickly, entitled person. But as the reader reads the book, uh, the reader understands why the why Foko is the way she is, which is also a part of how neglected she was in her childhood. So the translation is like an amazing in the sense that it is completely invisible. It's it's like as if the book were written in English. There was no lag in the translation, or there was no weird uh, rendition of uh, the Japanese into English. 
The translation was absolutely gorgeous. Very rarely do I come across books that take over my time and my being like this. Despite its bulky 864 page, I was glued to it completely from the beginning. While I was reading, one of the days I didn't do anything at all from morning till evening. I just read, did nothing. Um, coming across a book that would take my time like this is amazing and it doesn't happen that easily. The book was excellent I would say and it's definitely worth a read. Uh, you would get to know about Japan's history and there are lots of photographs, black and white photographs in the book which kind of tells you like how the house looked like, what was the architecture like and uh, the the forest or the cottage where they lived and stuff like that. It was really interesting to know a different part of the world that is so um, different than ours, to know a culture which is so different than ours. It was an amazing read and an amazing, fulfilling read, I would say. I would recommend this book to everybody. Uh, I hope you liked the review. I am not going to read a, a section from the book because um, the book is in my phone and I'm recording <laughs> with the phone. Okay, take care until next time and uh, be safe, mask up and uh, stay home. Bye, take care.